How can you say, can you give me the next working day or three working days from now in SQL Server? In this video, we're going to have a look at a particular date and then find out what three working days later is. Now, what do I mean by working days? Well, working days could mean avoiding the weekends and it could be avoiding holidays. Now, I'm going to start by creating a date table and here we have a date table. Now, if you haven't watched my video all about creating date tables, then you'll find a link to a video all about creating date tables on your screen. So as you can see, this date table gives us dates from 2010 to 2054 or so. Now, what I want to do is exclude weekends and I'm going to define weekends as being Saturdays and Sundays. Of course, in your part of the world, weekends might be different, in which case just change this code accordingly. So I'm going to add a where clause where the date part weekday. So this extracts the day of the week for my field dates is equal to Saturday or is equal to Sunday. Well, there's a quicker way to do that in. And Saturday is a seven and Sundays are one, Monday two, Tuesday three, Wednesday four, Thursday five, Friday six. So this now gives me the weekend days. I want the opposite of that. So I'll say not in Saturday or Sunday. So you can see it skips over January the 2nd and January the 3rd, 2010. You might want to check this with a calendar just to make sure that these are Saturdays and Sundays. So I'm going to declare a date. So declare my date and it is of type date and it's going to be the 21st of December 2023. So what I want for each row in the row free later. So it's not just a case of adding free days because let's say you added free days to a Monday well that would be Thursday, that'll be fine. If you added free days to a Wednesday that'll give you a Saturday so you need to add another two days and if you added three days to a Friday, that gives you a Monday and that seems fine, but that's only one working day later, not three. So I want the third row after. And I can do that with lead. So if I say select the dates and give me three rows later. So still concentrating on dates. And I want you to order it by dates. This over means it's a windows function. So I'm going to call that three days later and give me that from the date table where the date is not a weekend. So let's have a look and see what we get from this select statement. So if I scroll down to the 2023 you can see that we have got the 21st of December. So if I get an Outlook calendar for December, you can see here the Thursday the 21st of December. So three working days later is one, not Saturday or Sunday, two, three. So the 26th of December. So we have got this working. However, in a lot of countries, the 25th and 26th are vacation days. And if that's not the case in your country, there's probably lots of other days in this sort of area, which may well be non-working days. So what I'm going to do is create another table. So I'm going to call this table the holidays table. And it's just going to have one column holiday. And I'll also have a drop table if exists. So it's not trying to recreate this table if I run this multiple times and stopping because it's already created. This works in SQL Server 2016 SP1 or later. Now I'm going to populate this table. I'm just going to insert into this table two values, the 25th and the 26th. So what I want now is to exclude these two days from the calculation further down. So I'll just rerun this so the date is now created. So I can now say 
where it is not a weekend and where the date is not included in holidays. So how can I do that? I can say not in and in brackets select the holiday date from holidays. So now there are two reasons to exclude. It is a weekend date and if it's a holiday. So let's run this now and see what we get in 2023. So if I scroll down, when we get to December 2023, we can now see that the computer has jumped over not just the 23rd and the 24th, but the 25th and 26th. So we've now got one working day, two working days, three working days. Okay, this is good. How can I use the input of the 21st of December and then extract the 28th? Well, I can't just say and the date is equal to my date. If I do that, and I'm just going to rem this out, comment this out. If I do that, then I'll be left with nothing. And why is that? It's because this lead takes me three rows later, but this is a data set with just the one row. There is nothing three rows later. So instead, I have to put this elsewhere. So let's just remind ourselves what we've got. We've got all of these dates. I'm now going to put this into a CTE. I'm going to say with this table as that. So now for this select statement, we have got a temporary table called lead table. It's only going to be for this one particular select statement. I can then say select everything from this lead table. And you can call it what you want. I just call it lead table because we're using lead. And that gives me exactly the same answer. And I can highlight this inner section and execute that and give me exactly the same answer. So this is now a result set with 11,000 rows. Here I have the input of 11,000 rows. It is here that I can now say where the date is equal to the relevant date because We've already done the calculation. We've already done the lead in this data set with 11,000 rows. So now if I run everything here, we get an error. And the reason for that is if you're using with, you must have a semicolon at the end of the previous statement. So let's run this again. And now we can see that the one row out of these 11,000 rows where the date was the 21st of December, it now resolves to three days later being the 28th of December. So if I just change this date to the 20th, we get the 27th. And if I change it to the 19th, we're not going near this holiday season and we get the 22nd. Now there's one more thing we have to look at. What if I put the 17th of December or the 24th of December, which is a Sunday? What do you think will happen? The answer is, it gives us nothing. Why does it give us nothing? It's because in this data set of 11,000 rows, we have no Saturdays and Sundays. So we need a cleverer way to get the 24th, which is not here. So what I'm going to do is change this where clause. So instead of saying where this date, which is only Monday to Friday and is not holidays, equals this Sunday date, which it will never be because this data set does not include Sundays, I am going to say instead, open brackets, select all of the dates from the date table and I'm going to put in exactly the same things here where it is not a weekend and where it is not in the holidays. And where the date in the table is at least the my date or greater. So what's that going to do? Well, let's just extract this sub query 
and I'm also going to run it with this declare statement. So let's see what we're going to have. You can see that we've got the entirety of the date table, excluding weekends, excluding holidays, which is at least this date or greater. So if I change this to the 22nd, you can see that it includes the 22nd. Okay, so we have now got a table which has got 7,000 rows. So what date do I want to extract from that? Well, I want the smallest one. I want the earliest one. So in this case, the 27th of December. So we'll say that if you choose the 24th of December, which is a Sunday, I want this to be moved to the 27th of December and then that zero days, one day, two days, and then three days will get us to the 1st of January, which is probably a vacation day or should be anyway. So how can we get the earliest of these? We just put a min around the date. Now, do we need a group by clause? We only need a group by clause if we have got aggregation, so summarization, sum, count, min, max, and things which are not summarized in the select clause. I've got nothing that has not been summarized. I therefore do not need a group by clause. So that gives me the 27th of December. So let's just add a min around this date. And now if I run this, we'll see that the 24th of December is translated as the 27th of December, and then it gives me three days later. And if I want to add the New Year's Day as a vacation day, I can do so. So let me run this. And now it's a vacation day. This code will then give me the 2nd of January because it's now skipping over New Year's Day. So we've got the 24th of January, which has been translated to the 27th because 25th and 26th were vacation days. And then give me one day, two days, three days. Now, suppose we did not want the 24th to be pushed forward. Suppose we wanted it to be pushed back to the 22nd of February. How can we do that? Well, we just reverse this. Instead of taking all of the days from my date forward, we take them up to my date and go backwards. Instead of the min, we take the max. So let's have a look at this again. So if I copy these statements out again and take away the max to start with, we can see that we've got all of the days up to our date and including our date if it's in there. If I take the max, then this will give me the last date in that data set, the 22nd of December. So if I now run this, the 24th of December is now translated as the 22nd of December. It goes back to the last working day and then it gives me three working days thereafter. So not Saturday, not Sunday, not the 25th, not the 26th. So the 27th is the first working day, 28 is the second, 29 is the third. So we've done all of this with a date table. So please look at that video about date tables if you haven't already. We've created a table which shows our holidays or vacations. We have said what date we're looking for. We have then said, okay, give me my date table but three days later, but I don't want to include weekends or holidays. And then said, give me the closest date to the date that I'm looking at and give me the relevant date and three days later. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's quite a lot to unpack. If you want some more information about lead and date part and using subqueries, then why not have a look at our SQL course? If you go to our website, idodata.com, and have a look at querying Microsoft SQL Server with TSQL, you'll see that we have a look at things such as number, date, and string data types and functions. We have a look at ranking functions such as row number and analytic functions such as lag and lead, and looking at common table expressions using the with statement and creating subqueries.
In the next video, we're going to have a look at joining daily data to weekly data. We've got two levels of granularity and how to merge them together. So if you'd like to see that video, then please click on the link on the end screen. There's also a playlist of practice activities that you might also be interested in. Again, that's on the end screen. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks very much for watching and keep learning.